All right. All right. I think we're live. Welcome to, well, technically it's week five, I believe, of social distancing, but we're counting it as week four because we took last week off for Easter. So welcome everyone to Paint by the Pints. We are so excited to be back. I think last Friday I was sitting there like, oh, we could be painting. Um, so I'm so excited to be back tonight. And we have Jill Shanley, our artist, with us tonight. You could say hello, Jill. Hello, everyone. Um, and so Jill came out with this gorgeous elephant painting. And I think now I realize it's actually very funny. We used to just, you know, everyone would arrive and we'd show them the painting then, but we realize now everyone is dying to know. We got so many messages over the weekend and through the week asking, what are you painting? Um, so I think we might start to release them a little bit earlier just to, you know, give you a heads up. Um, but it was very funny that not one person wanted to be surprised in the painting. Every single, all 170 people, whatever, that voted on our Instagram story wanted to know. So good to know. Um, and as well, a couple of weeks ago, I'm sure you remember that we were asking, and we'll do this again. We're asking, what do you guys want to paint? We, do you want to do the theme in mind? Do you want to do flowers? Anything you want at all. Uh, and a, few, a lot of people, I'd say probably 12, said elephants. So we pulled it out of the bag and Jill came up with this gorgeous painting and here we are tonight. Um, so a few things to start. First off, thank you again for joining us. A lot of you are here for the fourth time in a row. Awesome. Well done. Um, and if you're just joining us for the first time, welcome. So just a bit about Paint by the Pints. We obviously do paint nights in normal cafes and pubs and all that, but right now we're not able to be there. So we're doing this all together apart. Uh, we're also doing a few uh, kind of like a quarantine stories mm -hmm. on our Instagram. So over the next couple of weeks, we've been sharing some stories of where you guys are tonight. Are you with your family? Are you painting virtually with, you know, your parents, your dad, your mom that isn't, you know, with you physically, but maybe you're FaceTiming. We want to hear it all. So right now, wherever you are, send in your picture, tag us. We're Paint by the Pints on Instagram and Facebook. And throughout the night, we're going to be sharing your photos and your stories. I cannot wait. And then as well, on the YouTube, on the side, if you're logged in, you can actually tell us, like, I, you know, where are you from? Are you from um, Seattle or are you from Dublin? Are you from Northern Ireland? Anywhere. We get all over the world. So I love, love seeing that. And definitely send in your photos of kind of your pre-setup. And then later on, we'll get into our um, our overall photo that we'll take tonight of the group. Um, so what else? A few of you also asked over the week about supplies. I talked to our lovely friends at artmaterials.ie, and they are actually working again on a very limited base. So you can use our PBTP10 uh, Instagram uh, or just promotion code, I guess. Um, again, it's 10% off. It, it's not anything that we're getting. It's not an ad. We just really like these guys. We want to support local. Um, and so it's for you guys to get a little bit of a discount and give yourself time. Like if you're going to order supplies, order them tonight, you might not even get them for next Friday. So give yourself time to get those supplies. And then, um, yeah, as well, all we ask for tonight's stream, it's free, it's fun for you guys. Um, it's for you guys, so we're just going to pay it forward. That's all we have, uh, that's all we have you guys do. So with that, I think we'll get started. Tonight's video, and Jill, back me up here. It's definitely a trickier one. I won't lie to you. It's a, it's a, it's a challenging piece, but you can pause at any time. If you feel like it's going too fast, pause the stream, do your thing, and then catch up with us. Don't panic at any point you have full control over how fast or slow this goes okay so Jill any other words before we get started yeah just take your time and don't get frustrated I've tried to make it as simple as I can and like like you said pause it there's a lot of layers but that's just all it, that's all it is it's just layers layer upon layer and then the decorative part at the end is just lines and dots. So, I mean, yeah, it does look complicated, but hopefully I simplified it enough that everybody can kind of put it all together. I'm excited. I love elephants. They're my absolute favorite. Me so too. I was thrilled, 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 thrilled to do this. I know. I was like, we do our dog events, but I'm like, maybe we could do bring your own elephant, but not many people have those, so probably wouldn't work so well. Mm -hmm. um, I wish. That'd be nice. 
Exactly. One tip. And if you've been here every week, you already know this. If, if you have a hair dryer and you have no idea where it is because we haven't been doing our hair or makeup in weeks time, go find it, grab it. It'll help you dry between phases. And if not, no worries. Like Jill said, it's a lot of layers. So as you're painting, if the paint is kind of blending in or turning a different color, let it dry, or you can do the blow dryer on it and it'll kind of speed up the process. So Good luck and we'll be with you all the way. So we'll be answering questions on the YouTube channel, but also on our Instagram, wherever you need to find us, we're here. So I'm gonna have uh, our tech, Steven, start our video and we'll get started. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Virtual Paint by the Pines. My name is Jill and I will be showing you how to draw and paint this beautiful elephant. For this piece, you will need a pencil, brushes, clean water, a towel, your canvas, palette, acrylic paint in red, yellow, blue, black, and white, and a hair dryer. I have also created a color chart for you so that you can see the variety of colors that we may be using. This is the final drawing of the elephant and it will be displayed for you at the lower right corner as a reference photo. To begin, with your pencil, we will eye up and mark the center of the canvas. Next, find the center of the lower half, that will be the lower quarter, and then the top half, the top quarter. Using my hand as a guide, I'm quickly finding the center of the left, and then the same on the right. And that will be the left and the right quarter marks. It doesn't have to be exact, just quick reference points. The head. We will begin with a circle. All this waving my hands around is me basically trying to work out the best way to do this. But I decided to turn my hand into a compass. The height of the head is going to be the same as the width between the left and the right quarter marks. I'm going to be using my pinky as the center place point for the circle. Then I'm going to spin my canvas to help me complete that circle. Draw a line down the center of the circle and continue that line with a slight bend below the lower quarter mark. It will look like a backwards J. Back up to the head, find the lower quarter of the circle. From the center of the side, we will draw a curved line. Starting in the middle, curve it up to the right and then center to the left. Think of the head as a clock. On the one to two o'clock position is where we will start the ear. Go up and over and off the canvas. Then around the 10 or 11 o'clock position, we will begin the left ear. Now, around the seven, eight o'clock mark and the four, five o'clock mark, we will draw the tusks. Draw long curved lines downward, then that will look like a large parentheses about the size of your hand. We had to place these before finishing the ears. About an inch down from the tusks is where the ear will meet that tusk. Start there, draw down, and out to the left. Mirror that on the right. Next step is the eyes. Straight above the tusks, on there, a curved line will be the inner corner of those eyes. Draw a small almond or oval shape in. Along that curved line, the eyes will be diagonally pointed inwards and a quick line above that for the lid. Now, back to the tusk lines. I 
put my pinky on top of that line and trace the outside of my finger for guide. That line will be parallel with the tusks going down just past the ear. Then sketch in a curved line going down and in towards the trunk, about the width of a finger. Match it up to the right side and do the same for the right tusks. This is where the tusks will come out of the skin. Let's finish the face before we can begin the trunk. We will draw the indentions for the temples. Left corner eye, draw up and to the left side of the circle. Elongate that lid to the outside circle, going back down and out to the tusks. Do the same for the right. The top of the head is a wavy line with a dip in the center. The bottom of the ear can be wavy lines as well. All right, now start at the inside corner of the eyes. Sketch in a light curved line towards the inside tusk, parallel with the first sketch line. Begin to taper it in as you come to the end of the trunk, but don't finish it off. Do the same on the left side, but stop just as you get to the bottom. I made a mistake. As I finished up the end of my trunk, I realized that I didn't like that look, so instead of going out wide, I took that lower line up into a U shape and a flat top. This makes the end of the trunk look like it's going behind the trunk and I feel it gives him more dimension. Now that we've finished the trunk, we can complete the tusks by sketching in the curved lines and tapering it to the tip. For the body, start in the middle of the lower right ear Sketch down, and just as you pass the trunk, taper it in. And a quick line under the right side of the trunk. On to the left, do the same. And another quick line down under the left side of the trunk. I decided to bring these lines a smidge closer to widen my front legs. Now, the back side is parallel to that right leg. I am adjusting the height of the front leg and darkening the lines so you can see better. Well done. I know this had a lot of steps, but I hope I was able to break it down for you and help you draw this elephant yourself. On to the paint. You're going to need a load of white, black, red, a 
yellow. And blue. There are a lot of layers in this painting, so bear with me and we will get through this together. Starting with a large brush, we are going to make a pale gray with a lot of white and a little black. All right, guys. That is, that is a lot of elephant to draw in a very short span of time. So I'm gonna pause it for a minute and just let you catch up. Um, and while we're doing that, I'll walk through some of my favorite Instagram posts. Um, I see we are back using a ladder. The amount of people that have gotten so creative with the art supplies. So for example, I saw somebody using the back of a cereal box last week. This week we have a full size ladder inside as a, uh, literally as an easel for a canvas, which is incredible. Um, I see we have lots of little puppies and cats kind of uh, helping out, which is nice. It's so cool to see everybody set up because it's all so different, but it's also nice to see that like a lot of you are doing this with your friends and your family at home. Um, and over the next couple of weeks, um, this week I promise is a, a trickier painting, but next week we're going to do something maybe a little, little simpler, um, and a few fewer steps. And then the following week we have something pretty big in store. So we'll, we'll keep you posted on that. I won't give it away yet. Um, even though I know apparently everyone hates surprises, so, <laughs> so I'll keep that to a minimum, but I'm going to give you guys literally another 10, 20 seconds to just try to pl play around with the different elephant drawing lines because it's a lot. Um, and once you're ready, we'll, we'll move on. So I'll pause it for this. Just keep it paused for another minute. Fill in the left ear from the center going out. Add a bit more black to darken that gray and add that to the inner ear. This does not have to be neat or well blended. Now do the same for the right. Paint in the head and around the eyes.
Now, dark gray for the area behind the trunk. Again, this is just a base color, so it does not have to be neat. Finish up the head and work your way down the trunk. As you start going down the trunk, add a bit more white or light gray to the middle of the trunk and the sides of the trunk will be a medium gray. Pull the paint down to the edge and swipe it inwards. Keep going side to side and work that wet paint back up towards the head. Take a small amount of wipe and swipe it on the top of the head for more definition and highlights and brush those strokes back down to the trunk. Let's finish up the trunk. Pull it down as you get to that curve. Pick up some of the darker gray and the end of the trunk will be darker as it is behind the trunk. with the darker gray paint inside of the tusk skin and the lighter gray on the outside. Same on the left. Here I am just touching up the ear, but you don't have to. Back to the dark gray. We will begin with the body. The dark gray will go right below the ears and along the head, the tusks, and the trunk. Then blend in some of the lighter gray onto the body.
the back leg that is going to be the medium gray, but on the inside of that back leg will eventually become darker. That inside crease in the trunk will be dark. Pull it out and onto the lighter gray. Now I'm getting back to the back leg. Pull it away and towards the outside. Next is the left leg. Dark gray under the ear, the head, the tusk, and the trunk blended into the medium gray. My brush strokes are horizontal and add a slight curve to show the roundness of the legs and the trunk. It also helps create this illusion of the creases in the skin. Now go really dark, almost black. This is for the space between the legs under the trunk. We are almost done with the base of the elephant. We just need to do the tusks and the eyes in the background. So clean your brush really well and we will start with that background and use a medium brush. We will be mixing an orange to red colors, starting with a light orange.
All right, guys, we're going to pause it really quick um, before we move on to the background, just to give you guys time to catch up. Um, perfect. So hopefully not too many of you are pulling your hair out at this point saying, oh my God, I'm so far behind. Um, that's totally okay. You're more than welcome to finish this painting at midnight tonight. That, that's fine. That might be the case. Um, but no, it is, it is such a gorgeous painting and it's um, just such a friendly one as well. I love the elephants in general because they're kind of make you happy and worry, worry free. Um, let me make sure that Jill can also in here. Um, let's see. So while we're getting Jill back for a sec, oh, there we go. Hey, Jill. We're just taking a break um, so people Hiya. can catch up. <laughs> so a few things I got um, from looking at our Instagram channel. So we have a karate teacher on tonight and um, Fun fact, that's something I've been dying to learn how to do. So if uh, Paul from really? um, Rathdown Kempo Karate, and I'm sure I said it wrong, if he wants to do next week's um, virtual Paint by the Pints, we could do a karate class instead of painting. I, I wouldn't be angry at all. <laughs> you know, everyone's kind of been trying to keep, um, you know, between everyone, I think everyone and their mother has been baking banana bread. Um, I have not yet done banana bread but I have some bananas that are starting to go that way so it's it's still it's in the cards um but it'd be great to kind of know what else you guys have been getting up to I know lots of new painters uh for the first time probably some people learning to play guitar or like the ukulele or something cool building websites what else have you heard Jill um I I made um homemade cinnamon rolls from scratch which was the first time I've ever done that and do you use cream cheese and uh no I didn't have any cream cheese but I had just vanilla icing so I just used that and it was incredible that's awesome I know I the amount of times I found myself in the past week googling um what's a substitute for x and you know there's almost a substitute for everything so it might be not quite the same but it's been fun learning how to bake and all that um so the other thing I wanted to say is um, tonight we have a few of our other artists on tonight. So we obviously have Jill from Jill Shanley Art, but we also have Shelly, um, our normal Galway and Cork artist on. And she's Shell Design on Instagram if you're kind of looking for something to look up for some inspiration for projects and all that. Um, I also think we have Laura, our Dublin artist from uh, Inner Wildfire on. And again, it's awesome to see the team kind of coming together, even though we're not able to do our normal events across Ireland, but awesome to see the team kind of coming together while apart. Um, so I think I will get back to the video and you'll see Jill kind of mixing colors in. Again, pause it at any point. This part's the fun part. And my advice to you is if you don't like the color on your palette, you're probably not gonna like it on your canvas. So take your time with this part, mix colors that you're really kind of enjoying and have fun with it. Then going to a medium. And then a reddish orange. And then we'll add a smidge of black to darken that a bit more like a smoky color. That's the color that we are going to be starting with. Your brush strokes will be chunky and choppy. At first, go neatly around the elephant, fill in those corners. And then stipple that brush on for a texture look.
Add a bit of that red to the color, but don't overmix it. Don't blend it. You want that variation of color. Picking up more of that smoky reddish orange, start below the ears. And then pull in some of the orange, making your way down. As you go down, bring in some of that lighter orange to finish it off towards the bottom of the canvas. Now give it a quick blow dry.
Here I am creating violet for later. Dark to light violet or a lavender color and then clean out your brush. I just remembered that I forgot to do the tusks. Start with the white, with a little bit of yellow, like a tiny bit. You want it to be a pale yellow. And then add a speck of red for a soft, creamy color. and a little bit more white, it'll end up like an off-white, and then fill in those tusks. It's crazy how much just adding that little light speck of, you know, a creamy, yellowy color adds. Here, I did make a mistake, so I'm just going to tidy that up. Adds to the painting. And exactly. This is the kind of the fun of the painting, especially using acrylic. It's very easy if you mess up on things like the tusk. You can go in. You can even wipe it with your finger while it's still wet. Or go on with the background color again of the elephant and kind of... Um, fix your mistake a bit. Yeah, and I'm always making mistakes. Oh yeah, everyone does. That's it. I saw there's like a good GIF on Instagram. It's um, no accidents, just happy mistakes. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that sounds pretty accurate. It'd be boring if they all yeah. came out the same. It's a nice way to kind of touch up the shape as well, because sometimes the tusk might be too fat, too thin, whatever it is. If you need to make it thicker, you can, of course, make it like a whitewash, add just pure white to your brush to make it thicker. And then when that dries, you can go over it with that, um, that creamy color. I am making a light blue for the eyes and filling those in. Do elephants have blue eyes? <laughs> I, I, I think this is like, um, it's almost like the David Attenborough of Paint by the Pints. We need someone to give elephant facts now. If you guys have elephant facts, you can send those in. That's what I'd love. That's so beautiful. And the colors of this is so dramatic.
Okay, here comes the fun part, the colors. In addition to the violet I made earlier, we'll be mixing various shades of green. We are going to be using the same rules as the gray, the lighter colors for the highlights and the darker colors for the shades. Starting with a light green, we will start at the top of the head. Work our way down to the left side to the end of the trunk. Now back and add some chunky streaks across the head and down the trunk. Pick up a little of the dark green and add some streaks along the light streaks. Next is the medium light blue. We will be painting this along the right side of the head and the trunk and streak it across to the center. This really creates such a cool effect. It's almost like it's glowing, but it's also giving such depth to the elephant. I love it. I think the key here as well is that the two paints are wet, so they're blending together really nicely. And blue is one of the base colors of your green, so it's gonna look fantastic when it mixes. Using a slightly darker blue, paint in the top of the ear and on the inside. Pull it away from the center. Grab some dark green next and overlap it a little bit. Move to the left ear and do the same. 
medium blue to green. A quick clean and then add some chunky light green. And I'm mixing some medium green just to finish off the edges of the ears. Now I'm just going back over a few areas just to tidy them up. Pick up some light green and we will work on the cheekbones. Outline the outside and pull towards the center. Same with the front right leg. Outline the outside of the leg and pull towards the center. Don't go all the way across though. Same with the left leg. Outlining the outer part and pull chunks of color towards the center. And then finally, the rear leg on the right side. Moving on to the shadows. Pick up some of the dark purple, paint the inside of the hind leg and pull it towards the center of the limb. Inside of the right leg, I'm not pulling past the center, just stopping at about the center of that limb. Now, the inside of the left leg and pull outward. Inside of the tusk skin, behind the trunk,
Now, clean your brush really, really well. We will be making a pale pink, so red and white. With a smidge of purple, like a dust, to create like a dusty pink. Onto the center of the ears. Now we're not blending, we're just throwing in some chunks of color. A few more chunks throughout the trunk and on the knees. Okay. All right, guys, so we're going to pause the video for a minute. And then along the inside of those tusks. So we're pausing it just so you guys can catch up for a minute. Um, as we're doing this, I'm actually going to see if Stephen can pull up some of our Instagram stories because they've been pretty entertaining. Some of you, I swear, are like master chefs. Actually, for a sec, if you can see that. So Hogue, which obviously is our BYOB venue, um, to stay, I suppose, with the current climate, they've actually opened an online shop, which is insane. Like if you've ever been there, even for their pancakes, which their pancake mix is on their website right now. But um, yeah, it's, it's incredible. And they have all of those um, kind of homeware things for sale. So if you're looking to kind of support or even revamp your house right now, definitely go look at Pogue's website because they have some pretty spectacular things. Um, yeah. In the meantime, I guess we could try to pull up our stories. Let's see. That was when you guys, no one wanted their, uh, no one wanted their um, surprise. Everyone wanted to know what it was. Oh, I guess they haven't loaded yet. We'll give them time. The other thing I think that's worth mentioning um, is our other venue, uh, Gourmet Food Parlor, all of the locations that we work with. So they actually just launched an online, uh, I think it's pickup and delivery service, which is pretty cool. Have, and Jill, you, you saw a few pretty cool like farm stands um, in at least North Dublin area. Uh, yeah, Jones's um, has a butcher that's connected to the Jones's Garden Center in Donabate, uh, the Country Crest Farm Shop. That's and in incredible. the like last week, they had a call in your order and then they'll collect it. Um, but after Easter, they realized that they're just too small of a shop. So they completely revamped their inside. So it's like a walk in one way, you walk out another way. So wow. it's completely safe. They've done an incredible job. So if you're in the Donabate area, stop by the Country Crest Farm Shop. They're fab. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, if anyone on here, right on our YouTube, if you want to shout out, if you guys have like small local businesses or even just a small business that you're still kind of able to do something from wherever you are in isolation, um, I, I'm beyond happy that we at least have these Fridays. I know Jill and I were speaking earlier and I was speaking to some of our artists, but we're keeping singing in all sorts of ways. Um, some of the some of the people in, um, even like our artists in Wexford, Jane, she just started a new um, page to sell some of her artwork, which is cool. And obviously Jill, if you haven't already looked, look at Jill Shanley Art. Um, you do some pretty incredible art as well, especially around like the kids' um, bookshelves. I love those. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go look at it, you'll, you'll know very quickly. Um, but yeah, we want to know kind of what you're doing to support local. Um, I know for our team, we've been busy uh, trying to bring some fun to not so much fun uh, people stuck at home. So we've been doing a lot of um, little private virtual events for different teams. Uh, we're doing a hen party next week for somebody that just had to reschedule but still wants to do something. Um, I, yeah, it's really disappointing to have to reschedule 
fun things like even a birthday party, you know, it's, it's not fun, but I have a good feeling we're going to be celebrating a ton of birthdays come, you know, June, July, whenever we ever get back to the pubs, hopefully. What do you think, Jill? Do you think we'll probably celebrate everything after? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. My son's birthday was at the beginning of the week and he was just so brokenhearted that he couldn't even see his friends. Yeah. So, and he's in six, six, six class, not oh. year, six class. I still messed that up. <laughs> um, so he is a senior in his little elementary school. So he's, he's missing out on that, that final few months of his last year, you know, with his friends and he just completely gutted that he can't see them or spend time with them so we are definitely going to have a big huge get together when this whole thing is over so. yeah absolutely I know I was talking to our friends over at Guinness Open Gate Brewery and yeah we were saying I can't believe you know we won't be back this month I mean we might not be back next month but when we are we cannot wait um and I know I've been drinking a lot of Diageo branded drinks which is funny because you don't realize how many um how many drinks there are that are all owned by Diageo, even like Rock Shore and all that. Um, but I've seen some pretty creative ways to get Guinness, like to look like it's been poured properly. So I've been entertained by that lately. Um, yeah. And other than that, it's just kind of been, you know, keeping busy, keeping entertained. And, you know, it's definitely important to us, especially even in good times, we were happy to be keeping everyone's spirits up and giving everyone a fun night out, but at least being able to continue that in some way, shape or form has been incredible for our team. So I have to obviously say thank you guys for joining these every week because, you know, I feel like we'd be lost. We'd feel lost without doing something every week. Right, Jill? Yeah, absolutely. This has kept me, this has kept me creative. This has kept me kind of, throughout the week like it's kept me looking forward to Friday it's it's kept me kind of grounded to following a weekly schedule and and if it wasn't for this I don't think I would even know what day it was so <laughs> I just but I mean I love doing this yeah. I love I love the challenge of, of finding a new painting and and trying to explain it in a way that that other people can can enjoy painting I love art I love painting so much and I mean my heart just bursts with being able to share this with other people yeah and we had another um I think it was 400 people signed up this week so I know a lot of people don't get to watch it at this time I know we also have a ton of frontline workers that are working you know day shifts night shifts and then joining either tomorrow or Sunday so obviously if you're watching this and even if it's you know a month from now do Send in your photo, even literally, if it is a month from now, that'd be hilarious to see a tag come in from that. But um, it is so fun for us, at least, to see that people are kind of doing it across the country, across the world. Um, we had someone from Australia last week, which, which is pretty cool. And even to have someone from Turkey this week, awesome. I love it. Yeah, I have no idea so you know, cool. how the word gets out that far, but that's incredible. I so, love it so much. My favorite part out of all of this is seeing all the different paintings at the very end. Like that yeah. group photo that you post yeah. is my absolute favorite thing ever. I know. I know. That's why I'm like, post your photos because I love seeing them and I love adding them to our um, our final group photo. All right. So I think I'm going to go back to the video. We'll, we'll play it. Yep. And we'll see how it goes. See how we get on. Once you're done with that, give it a quick blow dry and we will begin outlining the elephant in black next. You can use your small brush for this or if you have on hand a sharpie. I'm going to use the brush. And this is what I'm talking about. I Before we did these, Jill, I didn't even know where my hair dryer was and <laughs> it took, you know, 
it takes some effort to get properly dressed up, hair done, maybe for a Zoom conference if you're going to work from nine to five in the, your living room every day, but who knows? A new reinvented use for your hair dryer you never knew existed, pretty exciting. It took, you know, it takes some effort. Properly dressed up, hair done. If you choose to use the Sharpie, this is what it will look like. It will give you a nice clean edge, outlining everything on the elephant. and even in the eye, and the iris of the eye. This is a nice thin line, but again, I'm assuming that everyone's gonna have brushes and not a Sharpie, so I'm just gonna finish it off with my brush. I can see a comment on our YouTube about laughter yoga, and now I'm very curious what that is. Has anyone tried laughter yoga? Jill wants to try laughter yoga. There you go. It depends how much balance it, it requires, I suppose. That was the other I thing. mean, yeah. <laughs> I did yoga the other day, like a live, I did a live video. The lady was in Zurich and I did it with my friend out of bar Switzerland. And she was having us do this pose where my feet were literally in the air and I was trying to balance and I couldn't because I was laughing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. It's so funny. I, 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 <laughs> I don't have balance, but I still like to try. I've been doing a lot of um, biking in my, I found every single direction I can go in two kilometers in each direction. <laughs> it's funny. Like you, you, people are probably finding routes that they never knew existed considering you have to be, you know, safe, but yet get creative in order to get some exercise while still yeah, following the island. Right so half of our two kilometers is in the water. So. Yeah, that makes sense. That would be tricky. The one thing I miss is magazines. I miss, I well, I guess I, 
anytime somebody, cause we rotate going to the grocery store and, um, I need to send people out to get me some good magazines. That's the one thing I miss that. And maybe the, um, like a wedding planner book. Sadly, we're one of the weddings that it's probably going to get postponed. So. Oh no. Yeah. But that's okay. Because, um, we have a lot of, um, a lot of people in the same situation. So it's kind of been fun working with different brides that are like, yeah, you know, I'm not having my hen or maybe like, you know, August 3rd is my clean your brush well and give it another quick blow dry. Um, maybe like, you know, whatever April or May or June was their original wedding date. So instead of having that, they're trying to mark that special day with something else. And so we we have one person that's um, we're working with them to try to figure out like a Zoom pay for the pints for their family just to do something fun and silly so that they're not sad, obviously, on the day that they were supposed to get married. But it is fun to see how people are kind of getting creative, marking certain Onto dates. The one. You can make up your own pattern or you can follow mine. We're just going to be drawing curved lines and dots, swirls and dots. Okay, I'm going to pause it for a second. Um, so for this part, and Jill, you're about to get into it, um, but it's kind of fun that you guys can do whatever you want. Jill's going to give you the best of all cases of how you can kind of create a design that's going to look symmetrical and fun, but at the same time, don't be afraid to kind of do your own thing. And also definitely don't get stressed if it doesn't go exactly how Jill does it. Just have fun with it. Make a few patterns, um, kind of look, think back to all the times you used to doodle around in class and your journal and you're not paying attention. Um, that's basically what you're going for. Just some fun design. So I'll put it back on, but, um, get creative here. Don't feel like you're stuck to one pattern. If you want to do, you know, a different color, you can, but white stands out so nicely. Yeah. And I try to make it simple, just lines and, and dots basically and leaf, yeah. leaf shapes. So it's like little leaf shapes and big leaf shapes and little swirls and big swirls <laughs> yeah. and just a bunch of dots. Yeah, I have faith. We can get through this. All right, I'm going to put it on. Leaves now. and dots. Starting with the ears, a line just below the black outline and then some dots under there. And again, if you find that it's mixing in green, turning green, just, you know, hit it with the blow dryer or give it another minute to dry and then you'll be able to fill it in. The bottom of the ear will swoop to the middle and create two little leaf shapes in the center. And we'll add some more dots. Moving on to the forehead, four leaf shapes will meet up at a certain point. Then we will frame that with a half of a large leaf shape And again, with a larger one framing that one. Add some decorative dots in between those lines. Now, a quick swipe on the left side. 
and then a swipe on the right. Add three large dots connecting in the center using the edge of your brush. Back to the left, paint a water drop shape with lines in the center branching out. Same on the right. Outline that with half circles, petal like shapes. From the center of those petal shapes, draw a line down and taper to the center of his head below the eyes. And finish off with a teardrop. Add a large dot on each side of the corners at the tip of the teardrop. Add a few dots as well if you'd like. Quick lines under the eyes and then a few more dots. Along the side of the tusk skin and a few more dots. Lines and dots. Lines and dots. That's all we are drawing. All right, so now let's decorate the trunk. Draw a long line about halfway down, curve it over, and then swirl it under. Add a big leaf to fill in the space above it. Below that, draw in a line parallel to the trunk and three large leaves or petals. I added a large dot next to the swirl and small dots along the leaf. I decided the three petals needed two smaller ones. And starting another swirl that will go down to the end of the trunk. Another small leaf to fill in the space with three larger dots at the end of the trunk. On to the left leg. A backward S with three dots inside of each curve. Mirroring the left on the right leg, another S with some dots in the curves. On the hind leg, a long curved leaf, and then below that, a long swirl with a few dots. Back to the right front leg. A long curve into a swirl, double lined, and add a few more dots. Left leg, long curve and swirls.
with a small heart in between the tusk and the trunk. Below that, a large leaf with dots and another swirl at the bottom. Right leg, large leaf with petal edge and the leaf center. Hind leg, large lotus shaped flower or four leaves with the center point and at last a few dots. Wow, what an accomplishment. I know there was a lot to do and this took some time, but I really hope that you love this as much as I did. Elephants are really my favorite. I can't wait to see everyone's painting. And as always, please share with us at Paint by the Pines on Instagram and Facebook. And again, I hope you enjoyed yourselves and I hope that you're proud of yourselves. I'm All right, guys. So I'm going to bring the video back just so we can end on this screen. Perfect. I want you to take your time as well to kind of do each of the twists and turns that we're doing. Um, just give me one second to get ourselves set up. I'm going to bring the video back just so we can. All right, guys, so as you guys are finishing up, especially this last bit, um, again, have a bit of fun with it. Don't panic if it's not exactly like Jill's. Um, I saw some people did yellow backgrounds, which is pretty cool. Um, and as well, if you know you want to do your own thing with the, when it comes to the design, go for it. Um, and this was a challenging one, Jill. Yeah, it absolutely was. I knew that from the beginning, but I but I knew we could do it though. Yeah, exactly. And now I'm curious, you guys have to tell us, do you want something on this level, you know, again, or do we want something maybe a little easier next week that's fun to paint? Um, both good options, nothing's wrong. And, and when I say easier, equally beautiful, um, but just maybe less steps or less um, less layers if that makes sense. Yeah, and how and how did you think, what did you think of, of the, the, the drawing aspect of how I taught how to draw it? Like, were you interested in that? Like, I definitely, I absolutely wanna know what I can do to, to do better. Yeah, to make it easier for you guys. And the one thing that we could do and I won't reveal what we're painting in a couple weeks, but I'd say in two weeks, we have a very exciting thing that we're painting and it's going to be hard to do freehand. So in that scenario, we might be sending out a, like a PDF of it beforehand so that you can sketch it out. Um, and now is also a good time to talk about artmaterials.ie again. So a lot of you have supplies, which is awesome. I've heard of a lot of people saying like, oh, I can't do it because I don't have supplies. 
There's ways to still get supplies safely to your home, literally delivered to your door. Um, and then you can even leave the package for 48 hours as well if you're worried about that. Um, but if you go on artmaterials.ie, and I know Kriegel Art, I think, in Galway also, they're both still on a limited base, still sending out some packaging. Um, yes, and Kennedy Art just opened back up again for online delivery. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And um, I'd say they're all great. Um, artmaterials.ie, we have a discount code for you with it, um, as we were saying earlier. So it's PBTP10, and you get 10% off your order. Again, not an ad, just trying to support local. Um, and obviously, you can try Amazon. I know they're backed up as well. Um, but if you're looking to support local Irish companies, the, all three of those are definitely more than happy to get some um, some orders in. And I, I think they've actually been quite busy, which is great. And then um, as well, you have... I suppose a lot of the businesses that the venues that we miss um jill you were used to open gate um definitely some of the north side um growing food parlor events um was there any other venues that you had worked in so many no. uh the betsy and bon appetit yep exactly and then um we have laura on who she does a lot of our cleaver east events um and as well Against the grain, all the pubs that we miss so much right now. I can't. Even, I like can't even go down that route of thinking of all my favorite places. <laughs> it's too sad. Um, but some of them are actually still uh, operating in some level. Like I know the restaurants are trying to do some sort of delivery or you know takeaway service, which is nice um, if you're willing to eat out. Um, and then I'm trying to think what else. And then of course Shelly. Shelly was doing our. Um, our Cork event, which I'm so sad, it Clancy's in Cork. They just opened up as well, and like the space is so perfect. So, cannot wait to get to Cork when we get the chance um, to do that event. That was actually our opening event. We had to postpone it. So, looking forward to doing that when we get back to it. And then as well, Gourmet Food Parlor in Salt Hill. Just Galway in general, is such a fun city. So, we're very lucky. We get to be everywhere, all over. Um, right. So let me think what else. So I'd say as you guys are finishing up and wrapping up this painting, um, again, it's a long one. If you're still finding yourself painting away at, um, 1030, <laughs> that's fine. Take your time. It's for you guys. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to be doing this, not just when we're doing it live, but at a later date, like I said, definitely share your photos. We want to see everything, um, right now. If you're on Instagram or um, Facebook, tag us for Paint by the Pints. And let me say, we didn't actually bring up the um, pictures tonight, but we'll share them on our Instagram so you'll see them. Um, there's a lot of really creative, creative um, backgrounds and setups, and I love that. And even the drinks, people have like the best drink taste, I've noticed. A lot of people are like, oh, you're paint by the pints. Do you only do pints of beer? And I was like, no, we like wine. We like Prosecco. We like gin and tonic, everything. And we also like juice boxes mm -hmm. because a lot of kids are joining these events these days, which is kind of fun. Um, yeah. Chocolate milk was always my drink of choice when I was a kid. <laughs> so maybe some chocolate That's milk. That's my comfort drink. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you can't go wrong with some chocolate milk. Um, I know chocolate milk and a peanut butter sandwich. That's like my comfort uh, meal. <laughs> I feel like because Jill and I are American, peanut butter is like our favorite thing ever. But um, people, at least my Irish friends, think it's repulsive. So I think I feel like I need to do a poll on that on our Instagram. How do you guys feel about peanut butter? Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Yeah, that's so funny. My mom was from Scotland. She was born and raised in Scotland, and oh, my dad cool. was American, and, and that was her number one repulsion was peanut butter and I don't my understand. Dad, like we we were raised on peanut butter sandwiches and like my mom would eat peanuts but anything beyond yeah. like just regular peanuts she despised and it absolutely has to be a european thing so it's it's so funny to me because i live on it i love it so much <laughs> me too i like even a peanut butter banana sandwich is like just such a treat but <laughs> Anyways, um, so 
What I'd say is, before we leave you, again, if you guys are interested, we are doing private events. So if you have somebody's birthday or hen party or whatever, corporate event, doing a few corporate events as well for your team, um, obviously they're much more of a reasonable pricing because we're trying to make sure everybody's able to just afford doing what they want to do right now. That's why we're doing this event for free um, the last couple of weeks. Um, but please do get in touch with us if you're interested or you want to learn more about our virtual events because they're happening behind the scenes. It's quite fun, um, definitely to do over Zoom. And then what else do we have for you guys this week? Um, we will be back next week. That's a good part to say. Um, so we did miss you guys last week. Jill and I were like, felt like we were missing an, our arm or something. Um, but yeah. we're back next week, aren't we, Jill? Yes, we are. Um, the painting is a surprise until a couple days from now. We'll tell you ahead of time because we now know you guys are dying to know. Um, and then, yeah, I would love to hear what themes you guys want to paint. So if you want to send that in as well with your pictures, let us know what you want to paint. We're open to all sorts of ideas. Um, and also, thank you for everyone joining us week by week. I, it literally makes us so happy to see everyone signing up um, and joining us. Fun Friday evening and some, you know something different, I suppose. Something to break up the week. Like Jill said, now I know it's Friday. <laughs> But come Wednesday, you're like, what day is it? Oh yeah, it's Wednesday. Um, but yeah, any other um, any other parting thoughts, Jill? Mm, no, not that I can think of. Yeah. All right. Cool. So I yeah we we've we've, um, we've cut into Bingo Locos quiz forty three minutes over, but hopefully people can still go and enjoy some of that kind of fun. It's it's incredible all the amazing events that are going on and all the charities that are getting, you know, something from each of these things. Like I always say, um, our event tonight is completely free of charge, but what we'd ask is for you to pay it forward. So again, you probably heard me say this a thousand times, whether it is calling your granny to check in to see how she's doing, calling any relative at all that you might not call normally, that counts as paying it forward. If you'd like to reach out to a charity of your choice. I know for us, we love DSPCA. We love Children in Hospital. Um, we're also open to hearing some of the charities that you guys care about. So I know uh, Abine's Pink Tie has been sent in quite a bit. Um, and as well, the uh, Motor Neuron Disease Association is another one that we got a couple um, sent in for. So please do send in what you guys think and you know what charities you care about because we really want to bring that into what we do at Paint by the Pints. Obviously our normal events are a one-for-one -one donation so hopefully we can kind of start figuring out how we can pull that into our virtual events as well um, especially with some of the exciting stuff we have coming over the next couple of weeks. So um, yeah any any charity of choice for you Jill? Uh, my two main charities that I focus on is uh, Dogs Trust nice. and um, A Lending Hand, which provides hot meals for the homeless in, in Dublin. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. See, like there's endless ones. And I think um, it's obviously important to support some of the, um, you know, frontline workers and things like that. But there's also so many charities out there that wouldn't be getting the funds they normally would. Like I know the Cancer Society didn't have Daffodil Day, um, things like that. So, you know, Paint by the Pines, um, we really care about our charities and our communities and our people. So get creative, people. Um, figure out what you want to do to pay it forward and even tag us in whatever you end up doing. If Even if it's a selfie while you're talking to your grandma, how you pay it forward, we really would love to see it, genuinely. It's all stuff like that that just makes the difference in our week. And I'm sure social media just needs a bit of positivity right now. So definitely share. Um, now, last thing I'm going to leave you on is send us your finished photo. Send us a selfie of who you're with. If you want to be featured in Quarantine Stories next week, please send us a photo and a quick story. We have a bunch of them lined up for next week, so you're in for a treat. Um, but send us your photos, and we'll make sure we feature you. And then um, yeah. as well, 
What was I going to say? Oh, yes. Jill's favorite, our group photo. So send in, uh, just tag us, paint by the pints. Um, send us your photos from tonight and make sure you share it on social media and we will pick it up and put it in our group photo. That's literally my favorite. I love it. What do you think, Jill? Will we sign off for now until next Friday? Yeah, I think that's that's a good plan. All right. Well, guys, um, we're going to leave you at that. I will leave the YouTube channel open for the next few minutes um, if you have any questions. And if for any reason you're watching this later and you have still have questions, write to us on Instagram, Facebook. You can email us on um, paintbythepints at gmail.com. That same goes for any questions on private events. Just write to us and we'll make sure we look after you. So stay safe. Stay well. Thank you for joining us together apart for virtual Paint by the Pints week four, even though it's five, and we can't wait to see you guys next week. We'll see you soon. Stay well. Bye. Bye.